Okay, today we're going to talk about how to load your firmware on your board with an alternate method. A lot of people have expressed problems with using the USB serial cable to load on the TF drive that's already inserted in their board. So I'm going to show you how to do this with a fresh one. So we're going to remove this and we're going to take a fresh TF drive and a micro SD with an adapter and we're going to slide it inside. Now make sure that it's in the unlocked position which is towards this end and we're going to then insert this in our computer. So I'm going to insert this so you can hear it beep. And one last thing, this tutorial is not sponsored by anyone, and I'm not being paid to make it. This is done with my own money, and I'll be leaving a link in the description so you can find the TF card and SD card adapter. Okay, as you can see, we have our SD card loaded but we don't have it formatted. So we're gonna right click on our drive for the SD drive and go to format. And what we're gonna do before we can actually use platform IO is we're gonna go and we're going to say that we're gonna do FAT32 and it's quick format. So we're gonna click start. It's gonna ask us if it's okay. We're gonna say okay. And now it's formatted. So we're gonna close out of that and as you can see, when we go to the actual folder for the SD, right now it says there's nothing on it. So we need to create a file named firmware.cur. So we're going to pick text document because it's one of the ones available. So firmware is going to be in capital letters and then it's dot .cur for cursor file and press enter. Now let's check the properties of this real quick. So as we can see, it's set to a text document. So it's a .txt, but we don't see it. So what we need to do is cancel out of there, then type folder option. And what it says is file explorer options. So we're gonna click on that. Then we're gonna go to the view tab. And down here it says, for the checkbox, hide extensions for known file types. So we're gonna remove the checkbox, click apply, and then okay. And now we can see the actual .txt, so we're gonna right click, we're gonna rename it, and we're gonna remove the .txt and press enter. We're gonna confirm it with a yes, and we're all set there, now it's a .cur file. So now we're gonna go over to Atom with platform IO loaded, and as you can see, I have the actual Marlin firmware here. And you can get this on the Marlin firmware website. And the way that you're going to do it is you're going to download version 2.0.x for bug fix. Then you're going to unzip it. And you're going to go into your file explorer for platform IO on Atom. And you're going to navigate to the folder that you've unzipped and then you're going to open the complete Marlin folder. Next what we need to do is we need to open the Marlin subfolder, go to source, then to core, then to boards.h. Now we need to search on SKR in here. So the board that we're using is the board underscore big tree underscore SKR underscore V1 underscore three. So we're going to copy that. Then we're going to close out of boards.h. We're going to close these folders down and go to configuration.h. And we're going to do a search on motherboard. So let's see what we find, even though it's right in front of us. So what we have is the motherboard currently is board underscore ramps underscore one four underscore EFB. So we're gonna paste what we just copied and then we're gonna scroll up. And because this is set to zero, 
it won't work for us currently so we're gonna say negative one that'll allow us to load our firmware off the TF drive that's on our SD card in a moment and then we're gonna go to platform io.ini and currently our default environment or our environment underscore default is the mega AT mega 2560 that's not our chipset so we need to find it so we're gonna scroll down and we're looking for LPC 1768. So it's right here. We're gonna copy that. And as you can see, it's for the ARM Cortex M3. So we're gonna scroll back up. We're gonna highlight Mega AT Mega 2560. And we're gonna paste it right here. And instead of doing upload, because we're not connected to the SKR version 1.3, we're going to do the compile. So we're going to compile and then we're going to click save. Okay, now that it's completed, the actual compilation, we need to check to make sure that it finished. So we're going to click platform IO. We're going to go to toggle build panel. And as you can see, it says one succeeded. So we're going to scroll up here and as you can see, the chipset that we selected being the LPC 1768 succeeded. So in order to get the firmware, in my case and probably yours is going to be slightly different, you're going to navigate to this folder up above. It's right in your toolbar. So I have it open over here. And as you can see, I'm in the .pio envis or environment. Basically, it's Pi IO or Platform IO environment. So we're going to go to the LPC 1768. We're going to go down here where it says firmware dot bin and copy that. We're actually better yet. We're going to send it to our drive, which is the SDHC on our E drive. Then we're going to navigate over to that folder on that drive. It's not in a folder, but it's on the main part where there's no folder it's the top of the drive and we have firmware.bin so we're going to remove that and we're going to place it with the tf drive inside the big tree tech skr version 1.3 okay now that we have the drive out we're going to remove the card from the drive with our fingernail and we're going to place it inside the SKR version 1.3 we're going to connect our USB that's unconnected on the other end in just a second but first we need to move this jumper to the USB enabled which is the next two pins over as you can see now so we're going to place this in and we're going to place the other end into the computer so we can provide 5 volts of power. And obviously you don't see much at the moment, but you hear a beep. Okay, back on the computer, what we can see now is that it says firmware.cur by itself. And the file that was 0 kilobytes in size is now 82 kilobytes. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over to our desktop. And in my case, I'm going to open up Print Run that I downloaded for Pronterface. And inside here, I'm going to open up Pronterface. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect to the SKR version 1.3 and see what happens. So as you can see, it said connecting. Now it says printer is now online. So we're all good. So let's check to see, I don't know, end stops. We'll do a one for, let's see, M119 and press enter. And as you can see, it says triggered because nothing's connected. But you can always change that in the firmware to test it by changing one of these to the opposite logic from false to true. But uh, I'll leave that up to you. So if you like my tutorial, please Press the like button and subscribe and thank you for your time.